at some point, all of us find ourselves at a fork in the road in our spiritual lives. Suddenly you find yourself staring down two paths, two distinctly different paths. One says pleasing God, the other says trusting God. You look at the trusting God sign, you think it sounds good except it doesn't give me a whole lot to do. It's too passive. It's like, uh, if we're going to do this Christian life, I mean, really do it, then, then we're going to have to have a little bit something more than just trust, right? So you look back at the pleasing God sign. Now, now that makes sense, right? I mean, because after all he's done for us, the least we can do is please him. So this path leads to the room of good intentions. Oh. Man, it is an impressive room. My golly, with impressive people, passionate people. You're surprised to see that everyone in this room is wearing masks, but they are immaculate and beautiful, like the mask they hand to you. Everyone here is doing just fine. Everyone's serious about working on their sin and on their disciplines and trying to keep God pleased with them. There's an unspoken message in this room. God loves you always, but he likes you a lot less when you mess up. Still, you join this impressive group of people in this impressive room. And, and really, for the most part, um, you actually are, are coming up to standard on most days. I mean, really, you're, you're, you're doing okay. It's like you remember uh, to read your Bible, you pray for others, and you're even reading a couple of chapters in that book that everybody's raving about. God's, God's uh, glad that you're doing your to-do list. He's not happy about your thoughts, though. He's disappointed that. If you were serious about your sin, you, you, you would fix that. After a while, you, you realize nobody in this room really knows you. They know your mask, but they don't know what you look like behind the mask. They don't know that you're struggling. They don't know that in spite of all your passionate sincerity, you don't believe that you really have pleased God for a minute of your life. You are exhausted bluffing and faking like you have it together. And so one night when nobody's looking, you slip out the back, bone tired and dejected and disillusioned. You walk out onto the path until you hit the fork in the road again. <sighs> Trusting God. Well, if there is no other option, and you find yourself out on the path that leads to the room of grace. <laughs> it's a lot less impressive room, but it is infinitely more inviting. Oh, you are welcomed into this loud conversation, and there are sincere smiles. Oh my, there's not a mass to be seen anywhere. The people in this room, they are messy but honest. They, they tell each other the truth about themselves and what they're struggling with, and nobody's trying to pretend like they've got it all together. There's, there's a silent message in this room, too. It says, God is delighted with you, wild about you, regardless of how you behave. The people in this room actually seem to believe that God loves them and likes them all the time, even when they mess up. After a while in this room, you find yourself slowly starting to tell the truth about yourself and the things you struggle with, and you are shocked to discover that God is right here in the midst of it, his arm tightly around you, loving you, enjoying you. He smiles at you and he says, <laughs> you know, I really am big enough to handle your stuff. 
all of it. It doesn't surprise me. It doesn't shock me. It never comes between you and me. I am crazy in love with you on your very worst day. Now listen to me. I just want you to trust me with who I say you are. And I want you to learn to let other people love you with all your stuff. It will free you to love like crazy because you will have experienced being loved.